how to make things float in Unreal Engine. Hello there. Today we are going to learn different methods to make things float in water. Things behave differently in water. So cloth for example behaves differently than a boat. So a cloth tries to follow the waves while uh, a heavier object like a boat doesn't sway that much with the waves. So we'll start with the boat. So say this boat right here. It's floating in the water and now let's see how we can make it from scratch. So in the content browser let's make a new blueprint. We'll right click under blueprint class let's make an actor and let's name it BP test boat. And now let's open it. So the first thing it needs is a static mesh which will be our boat. So under components we'll click add and static mesh. Let's make it our route. And under static mesh, let's choose a boat. So maybe a coast guard. Now, if we compile and save, let's delete this boat and put our test boat in the water. So we'll drag it in. Now, let's simulate it and see how it behaves in the game. So, simulation is under this and simulate. And if we click this, it will start simulating. So, right now, the boat is not moving, it's behaving like a static object. So, first, we'll turn on physics for the boat. So in the blueprint, under static mesh, if we move down a bit, under physics, we'll click simulate physics. Now the boat is simulating physics and it's dropping down because of the weight. So now let's come to how we can make it float. So we'll click add and add a buoyancy component. So buoyancy or the buoyant force is force that acts opposite to the weight inside water. So that's how things float in real life. So we have added the buoyancy component. Now our boat will have buoyant force. So to apply the buoyant force, we need to define where we want the force to act. And we'll do that under buoyancy, buoyant data. So pontoons are the areas where that force is applied and we can add as many as we want. So let's add one for now. And it's applied at 0, 0, 0 with a radius of 100 cm. Now let's see what happens. It's again still running. I think it has something to do with physics. So let's go back to static mesh and okay. So it needs to have a mass. So now it's 100 kg. And now if we simulate, it's floating somehow, although it's not exactly balanced. So now let's have multiple pontoons. Right now, there is only one area where the force is applied, and that is 0, 0, 0. We can have let's say four and have them applied at different location like here, 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 and here. So to do that, we need to know what these locations are. I don't know why they haven't added the physical representation for these pontoons yet, but you can visualize them by adding a arrow or a static mesh, for example. But there is a better way. So on the pontoons, you can also mention which socket it is connected to. So on the mesh, we will create sockets with location where we want the pontoons. So we'll go to the state mesh, and this is the boat mesh. So we'll open it, and we'll go to the socket manager. Usually, it's right around here. If you don't see it under Windows, click socket manager. So right now we don't have any sockets. So we'll add four sockets: two in the front and two in the back. So we'll click this plus socket, and we have created a socket. Let's name it front L. So this is the front left pontoon. Now let's move it to the right location. So maybe somewhere around here. Let's move it up in Z about 50. That sounds about right. Now let's duplicate this. So we'll hold Alt and drag it. So another socket is created in the exact location. So now let's move it to the right, name it front right. Now that we have created two in the front, let's create two in the back. So we'll select the front right, add drag, and this is the back right. So let's move it somewhere around here. And again duplicate, this is back left. So now we have four sockets and you can visually see where they are. Now remember the name of these sockets. 
and under Pwn process, we will type the name of those sockets. Front R, Front L, Back R, and Simulate. Now our bot is simulating and it's relatively stable. It's not perfectly stable, but we'll have to adjust the location such that the pontons are at the same distance from the axis. Now you get the idea how to use pontons to make things float. This is a expensive method to make things float because it simulates physics and stuff. And you might want that for boats, but you don't want that for say some debris floating in water. So for that there is another method which is making them float from within the material. So for things like smaller debris or some smaller plants in water, we'll use the material method. So first of all, let's create a new material. So we'll right click material and name this M test float. And just give it a simple color. So we'll hold three and left click. And give it like a white color. Now let's spawn a cube. And if you want to make this cube float, we'll put this material on the cube. Now in the material, we'll offset its position based on water. So there is a material function for that. So we'll right click and search for compute Gerstner waves. Now this is the same one which is used in the water to create the waves and we can use this in the material to tell it to follow those waves. So the word position offset output from this will be connected to the word position offset of the material. And now it needs some inputs. So the first one is it needs time. So for that we'll right click and search for get water time. Now this one will allow our material to sync the time with the waves. So it will look like our object is moving along the waves. Now if you save it and take a look at our object. Now it is moving with the waves but it's also shrinking in a weird way. So we also need to override its position. So we'll search for active position and connect it. And now if you look at that, this is exactly what we wanted. Now this is going a bit too fast but don't worry we can fix that. So we'll do a math operation after this. We'll search for multiply. Connect it and use a scalar value called float amount and connect it right here. Now let's give it a default value of 1. So now it's moving fast, and if we decrease this value to let's say 0.2, and I will see it's moving really slow. So the speed by which it moves can be controlled with this float amount. Now this is the way we can make a solid body float that doesn't deform. But what if we want to deform it? That's again easy. So we just need to replace this actor position with the word position. So we'll search for word position and connect it in. If you look closely, then it's deforming along the waves. Let's exaggerate it. We put one. Then you'll see it's changing the shape aggressively. So depending on what you want to float, you'll change it between word position and actor position. So for things like cloth for example, they deform just a little bit with the water. So we'll use the absolute word position. And for things like the crate and the cardboard, they don't deform. So we'll use the actor position for them. Now to make things easier so that we don't have to delete it and change for every material, we'll make a material function which has both and the output can be controlled with the parameter. So let's take all this and duplicate it. And this time we'll use the actor position. So this one is for the normal floating. So let's name it normal float amount. And this one is for things like clothes. So we'll put cloth float amount. So that we can distinguish between these two. And let's search for bool parameter. 
and the switch and let's name this use cloth floating and if you are using cloth floating then this will be the output if you are not using cloth floating then zero now let's duplicate this and connect them like this and say use normal floating and put this in word position so now let's make a material instance for this one so it's easier to change those parameters we'll put this material in now for any material if you want to use the cloth floating we'll take this and we can control how much we want to deform it with this parameter and say if you want to use normal floating we'll untake this and take use normal floating and we can control the floating amount with this parameter and now to move it across all the materials we'll make a material function with this so let's right click and under materials material function and let's say mf float we open this and let's copy all of this not this one and put it here now let's rename the output as the word position offset and we are good to go now we can delete this and for any material that we want to float we'll take this material function drop it in the material and connect it to the word position offset now you can add it to anything and it will start floating. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.